Hello everyone and welcome to this Video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today we're going to actually be having a look at another Compact Armada 1500 series. In my last video I actually showed you the 1592 um, DT. I'd actually transplanted the uh, screen from the 1550T onto it but um, as we saw yesterday the machine was kind of starting to let go. So what I've done is put the 1550T screen back on it and given it its parts back. So let's actually have a look at this machine. See what see what it's all about. Now I have actually powered this machine up. You know, and it does work, and I can tell you the specifications. But first, on the uh, left hand side, what we have is um two PCM CIA type two, one type three card slot, a floppy disk drive. On the front, you don't have anything. On the right side, you have uh, the battery and the ba the uh, edge of the battery and the release, uh, headphone and microphone sockets, volume up, um, down and up buttons, and a Kensington lock slot. And as I pointed out in the last video, there is no CD-ROM drive in this machine. Um, it's floppy only. It has RS-232 serial, IEEE-1284 parallel, DB, uh, D, DV, I think it's 15, VGA, D-sub, um, docking station connector, clover leaf connector, the machine has the power supply um, inbuilt, like all 1500 series machines do. Um, the vent for a fan, infrared, and PS2 mouse keyboard port. <coughs> now, without further ado, I think uh, the best thing I can do is actually plug her in. Um, I think it would be a positive step forward. Let's see if I can... Whoa! Yeah, that's, that's not necessarily gone as well as I would have hoped. Now, unlike the 1592, the CMOS battery doesn't seem to hold any kind of a charge. You could probably take the CMOS battery out of the 1592 uh, and put it in here. What I think I'm going to do is just keep the 1592 for spares. You know, because there are bits on it that doesn't work. Even if the machine itself is a wee bit broken, it doesn't mean to say that um, a lot of the parts that make it up are. And I'm going to use one of those parts. I'm going to actually see... Uh, one of those parts actually be uh, recycled. Now, um, this machine, um, it came, uh, the last owner had Windows 98 on it, and um, the machine itself is a 133 MHz Pentium uh, with 80 megs of RAM, upgraded from the original 16, um, that uh, the early 1500 series machines would have had. The later ones came with 32 megs. Um, I think soldered in, but this only came with 16, um, as did my 1560 and my 1510 when I still had those. Um, has a 1.3 gigabyte hard drive and um, ESS sound card Cirrus Logic graphics. Now, as you can see, it's Windows 98. Someone has obviously, as with the 1592, someone has obviously tried to use this. Um, for as long as they can. It's got Internet Explorer 6 on it. And, um... It's, um... And, and again, yeah, I must admit, I do like uh, when people do, you know, try and make the best out of uh, machines that they have. There's Windows 98 on here. And, um... It's no CD drive. 
as you would expect, um, unless a phantom one appeared. And uh, they've, uh, like a lot of these laptops, they seem to have made merry with deleting a lot of the shortcuts. Cuts. Look at this. I mean, seriously, it looks like you've just they've just installed Office 97 standard. However, if I go into the program files, oh come on, load, 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 load. You see them all. Microsoft Access, Microsoft Bookshelf Basics, Excel, Office Setup, Office Shortcut Bar, uh, Outlook, Photo Editor, PowerPoint, Query, and Word, as well as Microsoft Access Workgroup Diddly. Um, administrator, I think that means. Yep. So, so that is how the machine is currently installed. Um, See, it was right. The mouse is a wee bit diddly 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 diddly, but I mean that's not a problem. So now we've established that this machine actually uh, kind of works. Look, we've even got sound. I thought we didn't have sound on it when I first tried this, but we do. Uh, now we've established that this machine actually works. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to check what sound card's in here. I still have a bit of a cold. Hope it'll, hope it'll bugger off soon because I'm getting really fed up of it. Um, same video on game controllers, ESS 1878, which is nice. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start, shut down, and just switch it off. Oh yeah, and there's not an antivirus corporate edition installed on here told me off the other day for uh, putting a floppy disk in it and then try to shut it down with the disk still in the drive I was uh, going into compact setup just to see what the specs were now I've decided what I'm going to do is make an upgrade to this machine and it's quite a special upgrade because I'm, this is the first machine of its kind that I've seen that's been able to do this now, I know that on some systems you can add a floppy drive by swapping out the floppy drive, the, uh, the CD drive by taking the floppy drive out of a multi-bay and then throwing a CD-ROM drive in it. But if I took the floppy drive out of this bay, let's see if I can. Do it one-handed. I can't. Yep. We find that the slot is way too small. I believe you can actually take this drive out and stick a, an extra battery or something in there. That's literally all it's for. Um, again, try to do this one handed isn't actually the most simple task in the world. You can't fit a CD ROM drive in there. However, there's another place to put the CD ROM drive. Try here. So, what we're going to do now is actually fit a CD drive. And we're gonna we're actually going to fit the one out of the 1592 DT. So the first thing we need to do is unscrew this wee plate thing. So we'll do that now. Oh come on. Didn't like there we go. Let's see if I can do it. Yep. Mm. There we go. And now what we see here is a silver plate. We can basically just push that there. And um, what was the blanking plate where the CD-ROM drive would go? It turns out it's actually kind of... It looked, it puts me in mind of the travel light modules that you can get for Dell Latitudes. 
Very nice. Now, there is now a great, there is now a slot in the case. And what I can do, I can take the CD-ROM drive from the 1592 DT, and I can drop it in here. Look, see, there's actual, there's actually a, a part there for it to go. I'll just insert it and uh, push it up against that, and uh, that should be it connected. So now, this machine has a CD drive. All I need to do now is to screw it back into place. As you will. Very, very simple task. I do believe that's my post. I'm dreading it because, uh, yeah, millions of idiots not doing things properly. Right. So now the CD-ROM drive has been added. I suppose I best actually test and see if the upgrade has uh, actually worked. So, smoke test! Let's see if the drive gets power. Yep, seems to get some power. I like that. You can add a CD ROM drive. It's not my plan to keep Windows 98 installed on here. It's a 133. That'd be cruel. In fact, what I wouldn't mind doing is a 3.1 and 95 dual boot. So it's taken a while to boot up. Let's see if it actually detects the drive. Let's see if I've got a CD that I can actually put in to test it. It actually reads it. I mean, the drive worked in the 1592 DT. There we go. CD-ROM drive detected. Now, let's um, have a Windows 95C CD-ROM. Here. So what I can do... I'll I'll drop that in and see um, if it actually reads it.
And there you have it. It's all working. I think what I'm going to do, and I've just realised something, if I put the 3 gigabyte disk drive from the 1592 into here, it will have, it will actually have a BIOS setup utility installed, so I won't need to install one. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back. Okay, so set rep. What I've done, I have, well, was, uh, Jings, what have I done? It's a good question, actually. What really did I do? Yes, that was what I did. First off, I swapped the CMOS battery because the one in the 1592 still held some charge, but I was ages wrestling the old one in. Uh, wrestling that into this machine. There we go. Um, like I said, I mean, this CD-ROM drive now lives in here, and as you can probably see, this is running the Windows 95 installation from last night. And uh, there's a good reason for this, um, apart from it obviously being in 256 colours. Um, and a lot slower than it was last night. It's because it has a 3.01 gigabyte, probably 3.2 if I'm honest, hard drive from the Armada 1592. I'm going to change the colour depth here. Yes, this does actually seem to be working better. But, as this is, you know, a, a slower machine, as you can tell, this is probably going to get a more plain Windows 95 installation than what I would put on something with a 233 MHz processor. Something with a 233 processor, obviously, that's what I mean. Um, so yeah, so I'll need to download um, some Windows 3.1 drivers, I think, and um, yeah. So that's what I will do. But there you have it, I mean, look at this. Absolutely perfect. So apart from the software side, Oh, quiet. So apart from the software side, I think we're all done. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you like what I do on my channel, please also feel free to like our page on Facebook. The URL, of course, will follow. Thank you very much for watching, and I will. I hope you will all join me for my next video.